Hello there Pisces, I hope you're doing well and I really hope this month has gotten off to a fantastic start for everybody. As I've been saying on all of my intros this month, I really am looking forward to seeing what's coming through for each sign because December kind of is a magical month. It's that gateway between this year and what's coming ahead. And 2020 is a foundational year. It's a number four when you reduce all of the numbers in numerology. And just like the Four of Wands, a foundational year allows you to really build upon relationships, business, and also personal development. So with all of that in mind, what I'm really trying to do for each and every sign this month is to identify areas that you're ready to release and maybe some of the trends and opportunities that are gonna come through in January. Before I get into all of that information, I'd like to take just one moment here to say welcome back to all of my return viewers. It's great to see you, especially at this time of the year, and I appreciate the support that you're giving me and also the work that you're doing on yourself. That's my inspiration for coming back every month, so thank you. Likewise, I'd like to really extend a nice warm welcome to anybody who is here for the first time. You joined on like one of the best months possible because like I said, it's gonna be jam-packed with a lot of information. And let me give you a quick overview so you know exactly what to expect for this month. Um, I like to begin every reading with some channeled information. That's when I connect directly with my guides and I share whatever I hear, feel, or see with you. After that, I like to use the Celtic Cross to help us see all of the high points, the challenges, and all of the various opportunities that are going to present themselves over the course of December. And then I like to extend the forecast to include some key areas that I know you care about, including health, wealth, love, and destiny. If you enjoy what you see, and I certainly hope you do, then I'd love for you to stick around until the very end of the video. It's at this point that not only will I give you a nice overview of everything that we talked about, but I'll also let you know how you can give back and get involved with the channel if you're interested. This includes everything from, of course, liking and subscribing to joining me on social media, to booking an appointment or even becoming a patron. All of this will be detailed at the end of the video, but I know you're interested in everything that's coming through for December, so let's talk about the channeled message right now. This month, as I selected a deck of cards and I began to meditate on your sign, the image that came through was you standing on a stage, and I watched as the spotlight was right on you. All the eyes also were pointed towards you, and it felt like you were really embodying some of the key imagery that I would see in the star card, which is visibility, accountability on some levels, and also the ability to use this position for the better good. With that being said, I also was picking up on a little bit of uneasiness. I think that perhaps the situation could come about in a sort of unexpected way or maybe even serendipitous way where you are not completely expecting it. So my encouragement for you is to try to kind of roll with the punches this month and if somebody asks for your assistance, calls you forward to speak in front of a crowd or somehow wants to get you involved because they know that there's something about your name recognition, your personality, or just your general skills that is going to help really galvanize and bring together a group of people, this is something you might want to consider. It felt good to me, but I could also feel the tension for you as to whether or not this was something that you wanted to do. Uh, Windows of opportunity like this don't always open up, so if there's something where you can really make a difference and there's just a little bit of discomfort, try to work through it because I feel like this could also present a really nice growth opportunity for you. The other thing with this is I really want to focus on the accountability piece. I wrote down, all eyes are on you, so I think that one thing that you can really do this month is to lead by example. So if you are in a position where either you're like the head of the household or there's a lot of coworkers that might look up to you or you might even be in a position where you oversee people, what you really want to make sure is that you are walking the walk, not just talking the talk. I think as long as that authenticity is there and also that accountability is in place, you should be a-okay this month. Again, try to enjoy this. This could also mean for those of you that are single and looking that there could be someone in the midst of uh, all of this sort of craziness that is interested in you. And that's one of the reasons I think you should also be open to doing some sort of a public engagement or speaking opportunity, or again, maybe just attending a large gathering. There's a chance to connect with someone that could be really important, whether it's professionally or perhaps personally. So. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the cards and see what additional insights they have to yield. Just a reminder, at this point, I like to remain quiet. After I've laid out all the cards, though, I will turn the camera up and we'll talk about each card and break down the meanings for the month ahead.
Let's go ahead now and take a look at your Catalyst card. The Catalyst is not only the connective thread for all of the messages, but it's also a way that you can stay in the highest frequency of the month. So we see here a reversed card, but if you look at the figure on this card, they're almost bigger than life. Uh, there's this really big palm tree or really large tree in the background, and this person is standing as tall as that tree. To me, this is showing that there are some situations this month where you are absolutely going to stand out of the crowd, and this goes hand in hand with what I was picking up on in the channeled message. Increased visibility, increased accountability, a potential leadership role or something where you're going to be asked to manage or oversee. As I take a look at the center of this spread, it's really interesting because I have every major leadership card I could imagine. In fact, I wanted to turn the camera down so you could see all of them. The centermost card is the Emperor. We have the Empress right next to him in recent past. We have a card that would indicate middle management, the Chariot. Then we have two additional business type cards, the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles, the King crossing all of this and the Queen in the opportunity space. For me, it looks like there could actually be two different families or uh, two different groups that could potentially be merging. It also looks like this could be a wedding. We have Ten of Cups here and Four of Wands. The Ten of Cups, of course, being family situations can be domestic bliss. The Four of Wands can literally be getting married or getting engaged. We have Six of Wands, which is a large gathering. And then we have two of the same suit, and we also have two of the same suit. So it could be a double wedding, or it could be two generations. This can be the parents, this can be the children. We see extended family, we see a large gathering of people. Uh, so overall, uh, there's a lot of visibility, and I feel like what you know, we were picking up here on the channeled message, I can now understand it. There's a couple of events, there's a couple of families, uh, and I feel like there's a lot of activity around people, and uh, you're going to have to probably be navigating all of these different personalities. So uh, we'll talk about that in a moment, but I can also apply the cards that we see here to your personality and your personal situation. So why don't we go ahead and do that first, and then I'll talk a little bit more about relationships and events at the end. So I think it was helpful to see all the different people. Now I can kind of focus on the messages here. One of the big things I think you should focus on is not getting lost in the crowd. With the Six of Wands, this can be the public, this can be a lot of voices that kind of try to drown out what your thoughts are. With the Ten of Cups, this can be family, friends, co-workers. They're pulling at you because that card was reversed. And then we have a very strong um, Divine Feminine energy here that's trying to kind of tell you what to do. So with respect to your own life, if you're trying to make a big life decision, that's way too many people. You're the only one that needs to be kind of driving this chariot. So figure out what you want to do. Stand tall, stand strong, just like this figure here. And tell these people <laughs> that you appreciate the feedback, but this is your decision. If you draw a line in the sand and you move forward in that kind of fashion, I think you're going to be okay. As we look in the environment with the Seven of Wands, this is a moment where you're going to have to be a little bit stronger, a little bit pushier in some situations, and I think there, that that will actually help you gain the respect of some of these people around you because they seem to be very strong personalities as well. So we were talking about the Emperor, we talked about the uh, King of Pentacles, I want to add one more piece with the King of Pentacles. For some of you, this can be about going back to school, investing in yourself. Um, this card tends to be very much about taking care of your life. So if there's something that you want to do for yourself and for your betterment, that makes a lot of sense. When it comes to being successful, don't worry so much about pleasing everyone or trying to repeat a past success. The way that you were successful in the past was by listening to your heart, listening to your intuition, applying all of the great knowledge that is inherent to this card, and it will happen again because you're good at what you do. In the crowning position, you have the Four of Wands. This is a fantastic card for all types of partnerships. For those of you that are single and looking for love, this indicates that you could find someone who is serious and ready for a commitment. If you're single and happy, this is someone who you could really partner up with in business or you could become really close friends with. If you're in a relationship, this just shows that there is a deepening of the trust that you've already really worked to build together. And if it's a business, this is actually showing that what you're creating is going to garner trust and support from the community. And I see that with the Six of Wands and with the Ten of Cups. One thing to keep in mind this month is that there's a lot of people vying for power. We have the Chariot card in reverse. My advice is to delegate because in the environment we have the Seven of Wands. 
The Seven of Wands shows that you can manage almost everything that's on your plate, but why not delegate? Why sort of tap yourself out so much? Because as I look at the ego, I see the uh, Knight of Cups in reverse, and the Knight of Cups in reverse can just show that you've been so exhausted from all of the responsibilities, from all of the people that might be kind of getting on your nerves, that this is a time for you to figure out, can I do a little bit less? Can I give some of this away so that what I focus on, I can do a better job on sort of completing? And this is where you could take low level tasks that are not bringing a lot of joy to you and just let other people deal with it. Because it feels like there's people that are either bored or just like to kind of stay busy. So this is something that would be really, really great for you if you have the ability to delegate. Um, otherwise, look at the equity of uh, sort of how many people are doing different tasks. And it might be that there's just too much on your plate. So just look and see if there's any opportunity for balance. I feel like this is going to make you happier and the people around you will kind of pull back because they have something to focus on. So this is the fine art of delegation, of deciding which battles are worth fighting, how much control you really need over all these different areas. And once you've decided that, I feel like you're gonna feel a lot better. In fact, when we look at hopes, fears, and opportunities, we have the Queen of Pentacles. She's upright. This is a very detail-oriented Queen of Pentacles. So I feel like you can actually start to sink your teeth into something that you care about. For some of you, that actually could be going back to school, reading something, or just you know dealing with the business end of things that really matter for you. So again, freeing your schedule, giving up a few things, I think that's going to be key. Just remember when it comes to your big vision and what matters most, stand firm, stand tall, and push back when you need to because uh, some of these folks will slip in <laughs> when there's nobody watching and you just really want to make sure that if this is your business, your idea, that you get to stick behind that. The outcome card, Ten of Cups in reverse, this is back to what I was talking about earlier, all eyes are on you. I think that this month is going to end with some big celebrations. Uh, I see at least two here. The Six of Wands was something in the past and it's probably already happened by the time you've watched this, but this is one that's in the uh, the end of the month and I would say there could potentially be one in the middle of the month with the four of wands so all of these different public outings will give you a chance to meet some of these personalities and if you're at a point in your life where you're thinking of starting a business looking for love or trying to learn from someone because this initial energy of mentorship you know I feel like there's at least three strong mentors if not four the king and queen of, of pentacles the, uh, the Emperor and the Empress, if one of them isn't you. And uh, also, just looking at the Four of Wands, this could be someone that you trust as well. So I feel like there's a lot of great uh, leadership, friendship, advice out there if that's something that you're looking for. So by all means, make sure that you get out and enjoy things. Let's go ahead now and expand the forecast to look at health, wealth, love, and destiny, beginning with the health card, which is mind, body, and spirit. We have this Earth Connection card here, Gaia, which also reminds me of what I saw here in the Catalyst. It says, be mindful of the planet, come back to Earth, stay grounded. And I think that grounding portion is the most important thing that we could look at. And with all of the energy going on this month around work, around relationships, around all of these events that are pulling at you, this card is reminding you of the magic of just getting out in nature no matter what the weather, and kind of disconnecting from all of this. Also, when you have all of these court cards and king and queen cards coming through, there's a lot of sitting down, that's what I'm seeing. Emperor, Empress, King and Queen of Pentacles, and even the Chariot itself, all of those are very uh, sedentary cards. So it's important for you to move, to change your scenery, to change your routine, and I think all of this is gonna help quite a bit in helping you feel healthier and happier. With the Ten of Cups in reverse, make sure that you're drinking enough water. And that's really the key pieces that are coming through for health and well-being this month. As we look at wealth, we have a really interesting message coming through here. Uh, grief could be affecting your ability to focus. This makes sense because we see the Knight of Cups in reverse here uh, in the ego. And then also in the outcome, we have the Ten of Cups in reverse. So these are normally great cards of you know, being able to be in love, be with loved ones, but the fact that they're both reversed and we see so much progress with business shows that for some of you, there's this juxtaposition of wealth and success, but there's some sort of a personal loss or there's something in your personal life that's pulling you out of being able to be fully present. So it's really important if there's anything that requires your personal healing to take place that you actually allow that, whether it's a health 
problem or someone in your life that has passed or has decided to separate from you. There's something that's causing a little bit of grief, a little bit of stress, and uh, I think it's really important to set a good example. Again, looking back at all eyes on you, if you are in a leadership role, when something like that happens, you know, a lot of the people around you will look to you so that they know how to act when the same thing happens to them. Take the time you need, support yourself, and then support them if something like that happens as well. Uh, ultimately, you're going to be fine when it comes to wealth and business because I see so much movement. All of your wealth cards this month are actually in the upright position. Uh, we have a king and a queen of pentacles, and we have a lot of community support cards all around you. So if you need to take the time, I don't feel like it's going to affect your job security. And if anything, it's going to allow people to respect you probably more than if you didn't take the time to mourn. Just as a point of reference, I know when my father died, I thought that taking two weeks was enough. In retrospect, I wish I had taken at least four weeks off and really just taking care of all the family matters that I needed to, sorted out what was important to me, and really I would have been much more productive and better when I did that. I think unless you've gone through a really profound loss, losing a parent, losing a child, losing a sibling, or losing a pet, it's hard to kind of understand what people are going through. So um, don't underestimate what you might need and don't underestimate what someone else is going through. They may be putting on a good facade, but that's just what it is, it's a facade. So. Give them some extra uh, leeway and don't be too hard on them. That would be my advice. As we look at love, the message here is to really be as honest as possible. It says, distant thunder and clear the air. If I were to look at a couple of cards that I think support what's going on here, I think one of them is the Empress in reverse. As I said, there's a really strong energy that seems to be wanting to come in and tell you what to do. A lot of times this kind of energy is almost like a helicopter mom someone who can't help but to try to sort of like show you the right way and what happens when this energy comes in is it it's almost as if you start to resent that because it's it's like why can't you let me figure this out on my own so if somebody's stepping in and trying to always tell you another way to do it or you should try this what you could say is i appreciate what you're trying to do but let me come to you. Let me, let me explore this option first. Um, or I just need some time and space to kind of think this through. And if you need to, you could just say this, it bothers me when you do this. Try some different approaches, depending on how this person communicates. But this card is a precursor to a tower event. So it's better now to say something that really bugs you so that it doesn't end up kind of blossoming into something bigger that you don't want it to. The other thing here is simply saying no to all of the people that might be asking favors of you. The Ten of Cups in reverse can be just that. There's too many events. I think it's good to go to a few of these, but there are a lot of things going on. So you could just cut a few out and say, no, I can't do that, or I just need to rest. And I think people will understand. And I think those are the two key ones that I'm seeing right now. The other one is if you need help, uh, but people are not giving you the help that you need, at work and let's say you're not in a management position this is about speaking up and saying I'm really tired there's a lot on my plate not everyone has the same workload as me let's spread this love around so that you know I can continue to get everything done and not get sick or something like that so you're gonna have to kind of stand up for yourself speak your truth I think it's good to do it there doesn't seem to be any really big conflict this month I can see the sense of feeling like you're sad or frustrated and I think getting this out, sometimes like writing it out first may be a better way and then kind of looking at your notes, not necessarily reading from a script, but having some bullets so that you can organize your thoughts, that's gonna be really effective. I'm not sure how many of you have experimented with uh, having sort of like a vision board or practicing a daily meditation on manifestation. When we look at your destiny card, we have an underutilized energy because it's reversed, but it says wishing well and I think that uh, many of you could benefit from spending maybe one minute or two minutes each day and envisioning what it is that you want to try to create maybe that day and also looking forward into the next couple of months and next year. I do this periodically when I'm trying to manifest something. I think I said to another sign I have a, a I actually have a little bulletin board here where I, where I have pictures and I stick things on there that I you know really want to remember and then that way as I'm working I'm always kind of looking at that and absorbing a visual download of that and things like this I also write down uh, 
from last month I have expect something wonderful and I just use one of these little clips here and I keep that on <laughs> this board so that I can look at that and remember that that's one of the things that I want to integrate into my own thought process. So don't be afraid to kind of put together some inspirational thoughts, ideas, and also tangible plans that you're going to try to do for the year ahead. The reason that this is really important is that it sets up a sort of energetic domino effect. When you know where you're headed, then as I've said before, the dominoes can kind of come in reverse and find a way to you. And what may seem like it's a happy accident is actually a synchronicity. So really focus on meditation and envisioning what it is that you're trying to bring into fruition. Spend a little time every day. It's not just a wishing well. This is actually you manifesting, you creating that sort of energy of the high priestess or the magician. And I think that this is going to be essential in your success and in really opening up the gateway in the portal for 2020. All right, at this point, I'm going to turn the camera down, review everything that we talked about, and then I'll leave you with a closing message. The channeled message this month was a reminder that visibility was going to play a big part in your life this month. All eyes are on you. And that makes sense. We have several public events coming through. We had the Six of Wands in the past, the Four of Wands here this month, the Ten of Cups coming through as well. And then also that there would be a lot of kind of pushy people entering into your life. Even in the environment, we have Seven of Wands, which can show people trying to kind of elbow their way into your life, especially the uh, High Priestess energy. So. There's all these people vying for your attention and also you're in very public areas this month as well. So try to find your way uh, of being comfortable in that and also maximizing all of the potential because as I said back in the channeled message, you may have uh, an opportunity to network with people that you couldn't have networked before with and you might also be able to use your um, newfound sort of visibility to affect change or to create some sort of a shift in your life and, uh, and that's really special if that's happening for you. When we look at your catalyst card, we have a divine feminine energy here, very much like the Empress. This is reminding you to stand up for yourself and it also is showing just how visible you are this month. Uh, definitely there is a possibility for you to find a mentor if you're looking for it. I saw at least four different types, three to four types, depending on who you're looking for. So if you're looking for advice, if you're looking for leadership, it's there. But guess what? A lot of people are looking to you as well. So um, there's an interesting dynamic at play there. The Emperor in the center is a reminder to enjoy some of the hard work and the recognition that many of you are receiving, and also just to take some time to relax this month. Do some personal investment, uh, not just of your money, but like figure out what it is that you want to develop with your skills, with your life, and uh, maybe sign up for some classes or some sort of certification. This really is coming through strong for many of you. If you've done anything in the past to earn this recognition, just don't second guess it. Some of you might be going through that sort of sophomore slump, trying to figure out how to strike lightning twice. I, I think that you just have to trust in your own skills and don't pay attention to what people think. That's a surefire way to kind of not do a good job <laughs> in any sort of task, whether you're painting a house or, you know, trying to write a book or trying to play music. You have to kind of like do it for the art and do it for the right thing and know that that's going to lead you to the perfect result. We talked at great length about this sort of pushy individual that's coming through. I think part of the reason they're entering into your periphery is because when we look in the environment, there's a card here that's showing that you have to stand up for yourself. Once you kind of integrate that lesson, this person will probably fall out. They're, they're kind of an echo of this need to just articulate. We saw that also in relationships here, distant thunder. So clear the air, but also really find your voice and be strong. You have a lot of love and support this month. The crowning card, four of wands, the outcome card, ten of cups, the deep pass, six of wands. Whatever you have been doing, keep doing it. I really like this energy. It's perfect for partnership. It's perfect for business. And uh, if you're trying to just be successful in relationships, all of them seem to be thriving. The only thing that I see here a couple of times is that you have a chance to sort of push back on people that are asking for too much. So if you're volunteering all the time or if you're driving your kids to Little League all the time and you're never just kind of having time for yourself, you have to set a good example. That's what I think I'm getting at for some of you with the all, all of the eyes being on you, especially if you're a parent, a boss, or anybody that other people are looking up to. 
when you start to observe limits, it just shows that you know you care about yourself, you care about them, and they're going to learn good habits from you. And eventually, people will stop asking if they realize that you are going to say no to certain things. So you will be able to retrain them. Okay, don't worry about that. Um, let's see what were we looking at. Okay, yes. Yeah, so four of wands, great time to meet new people, great time to deepen existing relationships, and also. Uh, really good for business overall. I think this is a key card for 2020. I'm happy to see that it's here. The one thing that really does need to be looked at is what's going on both in the near future and in the environment. The near future is about losing control or releasing control or about having the ship being steered in two different directions. So really get a clear vision. I think that's why the wishing well card came up for destiny. Where are you headed? What's your long-term goals in life, in business, in uh, personal parts of your life as well, like relationships, you really need to kind of do some planning so that when things come up this month and in the next few months, you'll know how to proceed. And then don't be afraid to fight for things that you care about. Don't be afraid to get rid of things that you don't and definitely speak up when there are things going on that bother you. That's what the Seven of Wands is saying and it's potentially one of the most important cards here um, because it's in the environment, it's touching a lot of things around it and I think that once you master that ability to be outspoken, you're going to be uh, a lot happier. And that brings us to what's going on here with the Knight of Cups. So Knight of Cups in reverse, that's the only thing here that really is kind of taking you down a bit. The uh, Ten of Cups in reverse can have to do with, again, people needing or wanting too much. The fact that I see grief here in the Wealth card could mean that a close friend, um, a valued a family member, or maybe even a pet, you might have, you might be suffering from some loss because that could explain why the chariot's reversed and why all of your cups cards are reversed. Uh, so if you are going through that, then give yourself time. I use myself as an example. Definitely err on the side of asking for too much. You can always come back early if you need to. We talked about clearing the air here. So for those of you that are, again, in a situation where someone is kind of stepping on your feet or pushing too much or not listening to you, say something before it gets too sort of <laughs> it gets too exacerbated or too big and you'll be able to avoid like a ten of swords incident or a tower or a devil so this is something that is very much under your control and i think again when we go to the environment it's the seven of wands it's connected to this empress card and i think you can absolutely kind of nip some of this stuff in the bud same thing with the ten of cups there could also just be someone in your life that really needs a lot from you and the same thing is true for that, which is there just has to be more reciprocity. Finally, as we saw here with the wishing well, uh, working on manifestation this month is really, really essential. I think that some of this can involve writing things down. There's a lot of power in the written word and then meditating on that. Obviously, I'm a fan of writing things down and I have little stickies and notes and things like that to really help me um, visualize what I'm trying to do and I combine that with pictures as well so obviously I like both because I work with tarot cards but um, I might do a video in the future on like how to make a manifestation board but for now just trust me you can take pictures like this you can use words like this and you can create things that you're trying to bring into fruition and it's very effective that brings this monthly reading to a close but hopefully you got all the guidance you need for the month ahead if you ever find that you're at a point where you need some additional clarification on something that we talked about here today, or maybe there's something going on in your life and you would like a little bit of advice, the good news is you can reach out to me. Uh, by clicking on the first card or the first link, you can check out my rates and availability on my booking site. And if it makes sense, feel free to schedule an appointment with me and I look forward to chatting with you. You can also show your support by becoming a patron of the channel. And the way that you can do this is by clicking on the second card and or the second link. Once you get to that page, you'll see that there are several ways that you can give back, including a one-time contribution through PayPal, an ongoing contribution through Patreon, or now something that's new, the membership here on YouTube. To everyone that has made a contribution in the past, I just wanna say thank you so much. All that you saw today, all of this content is a direct result of your kindness, your generosity, and your contribution, so I appreciate it. And if you're thinking of doing that in the future, then you're gonna make the next round possible for someone else. So again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Finally, the easiest way to show support is 
actually just by clicking like and subscribe if you haven't already, and then joining me across social media. To do this, please go ahead and click on the third card or the third link, which will connect you to my social media feeds. I'm on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and I also have a newsletter. So if you would like to, please subscribe to the newsletter and join me on those other networks. And then you can also share the content that you see there on your networks. Whenever you do that sharing, it really actually helps, not just the health of this channel, but it helps me check off a few of my planetary goals. I want to really help bring awareness to spirituality and bring it into the mainstream because I think a lot of times there's been a stigma about talking about psychic and intuitive development and just about awakening. So I'm really trying to get the word out there to normalize this experience and to also pass on the baton so other people can really become light workers and share their light on this planet. So a simple share does a lot and I just wanna say I appreciate you and I appreciate that as well. All right, I'd like to now leave you with your closing word for the month of December. One thing that I'm seeing as I'm looking at all the cards again is this longing for a family. The Empress card in reverse is again this maternal yearning. The Four of Wands as illustrated in this particular deck actually has to do with the very close bonds of family. We see a father and a daughter here. The Ten of Cups is a domestic bliss card, but the Ten of Cups was reversed and that maternal card was reversed. So some of you might be trying to figure out either how to find your extended family, maybe some of the uh, close loved ones, your grandparents, your aunts and your uncles, maybe they've passed away and you find yourself for the first time sort of alone during the holiday season, or you might be trying to start a family and you're either missing uh, the kind of key component, which could be the, the money to make this happen, the partner to make this happen, the connection to make it happen, something's missing here. And this is where the grief is entering in. So with this, it's interesting because we actually, I forgot to talk about this when I did the review. Um, it says, stay grounded. Uh, I think this is the key thing here. It says, be mindful of the planet, come back to earth, stay grounded. So um, it's easier said than done when all this stuff is going on. It can just feel really emotional. So if you're trying to find your either your family or your chosen family, like a group of friends that you can kind of hang out with and create a new sense of community, what I want you to try to, to do this month is keep pushing yourself to get out there because I do see a lot of potential parties and gatherings and people. It takes time. Stuff like that doesn't happen overnight. I've moved a lot in my life and I do remember that part of it. Uh, it. Especially if you're brand new to an area, it can take at least one year, if not two or three, to really get um, feeling like you're a part of that community. And for me, it really only kicked in sometimes when I started a, a job. And that was one of the, the best things about working is you started to make all of these new friends. So give yourself time. And you know, one thing that I always give people advice on when they're looking for love, and we do have cards of like love and friendship here, the, the Ten of Cups can still just be friends if you want that to be friends, um, is that I try to say, find something that you love to do. It could be doing something of service, it could be artistic, it could be you know trying to do something to help the planet, because we have that here as well. Find something that really inspires you, and when you start to do that work, for me, one of the examples is actually yoga. Uh, I did yoga teacher training, and over the course of like a year and a half, I probably met 20 or 30 people that I still keep in touch with uh, from time to time. We're, we're on social media networks together and I see a few in real life frequently. So I just wanna let you know that you can do it. You, it just takes work. That was a lot of work for several years. I, I went to a lot of classes. I talked to a lot of people. I did a lot of mingling. And then when I was interested in metaphysics, the same thing is true. I was you know, meditating all the time, going to different classes, learning about how to do what I'm doing right now. And, um, and that's how I met a lot of friends. And then when you start to work in an industry, you just start to meet people too. So I think working, putting yourself out there and getting comfortable with that feeling of sometimes, you know, this can be a self-conscious thing, right? Like if you enter a room where you don't know anyone, all eyes on you can be, how do I fit in and how do I start a conversation? So this month, I just want you to take a chance and see yourself as these cards are portraying you, which is that you have a right to be there. People will look at you and see you as a valuable person. And it looks like you can start to find what you're looking for. Finding the, the family, I don't actually see like this month, I would be looking for the sun card. I don't see a baby for those of you that are trying to expand your family. But if you're trying to find friends, partnership or love, that's possible this month. 
And if you're trying to find things that bring you joy, that's also possible. I, I think taking a class or getting involved in the community or doing some sort of um, community service, it would be really, really good this month because it feels like there's a lot of great growth that can come from that. I wanted to hit on one other thing here, which is if you are going to a, a, a double wedding or an event with like two different sets of family, the one thing that is also going to be very important in this particular situation is it feels like this is a, run, a runaway train because we have the chariot card in reverse, which is kind of going in the opposite direction that you want. It seems like if this is an event for you, then I'm, I'm missing out on the happiness here. And it feels like you have to get pushy here. And that's the one thing that I, I mentioned when we were doing the review just a moment ago. I think this is the highlight card, the seven of wands. It's hard to see it. I'll pull it closer. The, yeah, there we go. Um, the, this particular Seven of Wands shows a couple of grumpy people behind the scenes. Uh, I prefer the typical illustration showing someone that's pushing to get what they need to get done. So I think this month, a strongly written letter is not enough. You need to have a face-to-face, -face, you need to have the power of your voice, you need good um, posture, and you need to not be afraid to have someone see you eye to eye. This is going to be what's necessary to really make a shift happen. And if this is your wedding, or if this is your event, or if you have a say in this, then don't let other people steamroll you. This is what's going to eventually help you avoid a meltdown, a tower incident, some sort of argument, uh, and I think that that's key. And this is a very sort of shadowy person here that's showing their strength. So you need to kind of, I think this month, possibly come out of the shadows and just own that energy, that star-like energy that really wants to radiate. Because I like what I'm seeing here. You've done some great work on yourself. I wouldn't have seen cards like the Six of Wands, the Four of Wands, and the Ten of Cups if you weren't doing something great. So um, keep it up. Good luck with everything. And don't be afraid to shine, okay? I said that for another sign, but for you, I think it's especially true because it seems like there's a little bit of hesitation. All right. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some of you for the live feeds that I'll be doing this month, but if you have a busy holiday season and we don't get a chance to uh, say hello, then I just want to wish you a, um, an early Happy New Year, and I look forward to talking to you uh, hopefully again this month and, uh, of course, again in January. Until then, I wish you love and light, and I thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your journey. Have a great New Year. See you soon.